topics from the month of January. Generative artificial intelligence. Top technology companies like Microsoft, Google, Meta have commercial AI labs researching generative AI innovations. Generative AI has revolutionary applications, but some deep concerns as well. Now, generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that involves creating new original content or data using machine learning algorithms. It can be used to generate text, images, music, or other types of media. Generative AI works by training a model on a large data set and then using that model to generate new previously unseen content that is similar to the training data. This can be done through techniques such as neural machine translation, image generation, and music generation. Now, uses of generative AI are agencies can generate personalized social media posts, blogs, and marketing text, videos, copies by providing a text prompt to a generative AI service like ChatGPT. It can help sift, uh, sift through numerous legal research materials and produce pertinent, specific, and actionable summary. As a result, it can reduce the countless hours of human research and enable them to focus on more complex and exciting problems. It can also create and simulate complex engineering designs and architecture. It can help speed up the iterative, iterative development and testing of novel designs. It can also help, profession, help health professionals with medical diagnosis. AI can generate potential and alternative treatment personalized to patient system and medical history. For instance, DeepMind AlphaFold can predict the shape of proteins. Now, concerns regarding generative AI are that it can be misused to create deep fakes and propagate disinformation, manipulate public opinion, harass or defame individuals. Generative AI uses machine learning to infer information. It can lead to inaccurate results if the data provided to AI is biased, inaccurate or not comprehensive. Now, large language models enable human-like speech and text. However, recent evidence suggests that larger and more sophisticated systems are often more likely to absorb underlying social biases from their training data. These AI biases can include sexist, racist, albeit approaches within online communities. AI may also produce low quality and less accurate information, specifically in context of complex engineering and medical diagnosis. Although it is too early to make certain judgments, there is a risk that generative AI could contribute to unemployment in certain situations. This could help happen if generative AI automates tasks or processes previous, previously performed by humans, leading to displacement of human workers. Moving on to deep synthesis technology and deep fakes, the Cyberspace Administration of China is expected to roll out a new regulation to restrict the use of deep synthesis technology and curb disinformation. Now, deep synthesis is defined as the use of technology including deep learning and augmented reality to generate text, images, audio, video to create virtual scenes. One of the most notorious applications of this technology is deep fakes. Now, deep fakes are a compilation of artificial images and audio put together with machine learning algorithms to spread misinformation and replace real person's appearance, voice or both with similar artificial likeness or voices. It can create people who does not exist and it can fake real people saying and doing things that they did not do or say. There have been multiple instances of using deep fakes to depict someone in compromising and embarrassing situations, including deep fake pornographic material of celebrities. Deep fakes have been used for financial frauds. Deep fakes can be used to influence elections. They can also be used to carry out espionage activities. Doctored videos can be used to blackmail governments and defense officials into divulging state secrets. Now, China's policy requires deep synthesis service providers and users to ensure that the doctored content using the technology is explicitly labeled and can be traced back to its source. The regulation also mandates people using technology to edit someone's image or voice to notify and take consent of the person in question. When reposting news made by technology, the sources can only be from the government-approved list of news outlets. Deep synthesis service providers must also abide by local laws, respect ethics, maintain correct political direction, and correct political opinion orientation. Initiatives by other countries include the European Union, which updated code of practice to Stop the spread of disinformation through deep fakes. The revised code requires tech companies such as Google, Meta, Twitter, etc. to take measures in countering deep fakes and fake accounts on the platform. They have six months to implement their measures once they have signed up for the code. If found non-compliant, these companies can face fines as much as 6% of their annual global turnover. Moving on to uncontrolled re-entry of rockets and satellites, experts have signed an open letter published by Outer Space Institute calling for efforts to restrict uncontrolled re-entries of rockets and satellites back into Earth in unguided fashion. Now, at present, there are more than 6,000 satellites in orbit. Most of them are in the LEO and GEO orbits. Satellites are put into orbit through rockets. Rockets have multiple stages. Once a stage has increased the rocket's altitude and velocity by a certain amount, the rocket detaches it. Some rockets detach all their larger stages before reaching the destination orbit. A smaller engine then moves the payload to its final orbit. Other rockets carry payload to the orbit, then perform a de-orbit maneuver to begin their descent. In both cases, rocket stages come back down in controlled or uncontrolled ways. Now, in an uncontrolled re-entry, the rocket stages fall freely under the gravity. Its downward path is determined by the shape, angle of descent, and air currents, and other characteristics. Now, rocket stage also disintegrates as it falls. Most rocket parts have landed in oceans, principally because Earth's surface has more water than land. But many have dropped on land as well. Some pieces burn up entirely while others don't. Because of high speed of falling objects, even small object debris can be deadly.
Now concerns about reentry is that if falling debris is not completely burned through the fallen atmosphere, it can cause great damage to life and property if it falls in a populated area. If re-entering stage still holds fuel, there is a risk of atmospheric and terrestrial con chemical contamination. The United States of America requires all launches to keep the chance of casualty from a re-entering body to below 0.01%. But the US Air Force and NASA have waived this requirement on multiple occasions. A July 2022 study by researchers in Canada found that this threshold is arbitrary and makes little sense in an era when new technologies enabled controlled re-entries. Many people have also become more densely many places have now also become more densely populated and thus risks have increased. There is no international binding agreement to ensure rocket stages always perform controlled re-entry. The Liability Convention of 1972 requires country to pay for damages and not prevent them. Now, the launch trajectory should be planned in a manner to ensure the falling parts fall in ocean in order to avoid human casualties. Future solutions should be extended to re-entering satellites as well. Advances in electronics and fabrications have made way for smaller satellites, which are easier to build and launch in large number. Smaller satellites may get burnt completely into the atmosphere before reaching the land surface. The voice technology to combat cyber frauds. Voice technology can be utilized to combat cyber frauds. Banks and cyber frauds in India are on the rise. According to data by RBI, frauds have cost the country an estimated 100 crore every day over the last seven years. The frauds reported in 2021-22 were 23.69% higher than the previous year, although there was a decline in the amount involved. Now about voice technology, it encompasses voice biometrics and voice recognition technology. It uses unique characteristics of a person's voice as identification. The person creates a voice, digital voice print and compares it to caller's voice. Benefits compared to other biometrics, voice authentication can significantly improve security over knowledge-based authentication methods. Voice technology is the cheapest technology compared to other biometrics. It does not require a reader or a special device. It is non-invasive, portable, and affords remote identification. Passwords are considered the weakest link in security. Unlike a password, it is not possible to copy a customer's voice. Hence, voice-based authentication technologies are more difficult to hack. It requires a caller in very short, short time by analyzing. It verifies the caller in a very short time by analyzing the caller's voice and flags suspicious call. Now, voice technology allows privacy because it does not require users to reveal their personal information. The technology is sensitive enough to detect if someone is impersonating the user or playing a recording. It can identify even if the user has a cold or a sore throat. The potential use of these technology is the voice biometric industry is going exponentially. Experts expect the market to reach a market size of 3.9 billion by 2026. Voice biometrics can be used in financial institution, forensics and law enforcement, airport security, etc. It has the advantage of improving user experience reducing call handle time and call center costs. It can also be used by governments in implementation of welfare schemes like beneficiary authentication. Now, concerns associated with voice technology is the technology may not be 100% foolproof. It has an accuracy of 90 to 99%, which may give false positives, which are dangerous. Use of ethylene glycol in cough syrups. At least 18 children died after consuming India-made cough syrup in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan has claimed that syrup had contaminated ethylene glycol. Now, ethylene glycol is a colorless, odorless, alcoholic compound that can be fatal if consumed. It is mostly used as an automotive, automotive antiphase and as a raw material for manufacturing polyester fibers. It is also found in several products such as hydraulic plate fluids, stamp paddings, ballpoint pens, solvent, paints, cosmetics, and plastics. Use of ethylene glycol in cough syrups, usually common solvents such as glycerine, also known as glycerol, and pro propylene glycol are used in cough syrups to provide liquid base to non-water soluble paracetamol or acetaminophen. These solvents also act as preservative, thickeners, sweeteners, and antimicrobial agents. However, in order to cut expenses and due to solubility of compounds like diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol, manufacturers may sometimes substitute it for non-toxic solvents such as glycerine or propylene glycol potentially resulting in contamination. The ingestion of ethylene glycol can cause severe health effects as per CDC, central nervous system depression, nausea, vomiting, intoxication, euphoria, stupor, respiration depression, respiratory depression and reduced excretion of urine can occur due to ethylene glycol intoxication. Now moving on to BF7 subvariant. China witnessed COVID-19 surge driven by BF7 subvariant of Omicron variant. Now, BF7 is a sub-lineage of the Omicron variant, BA5. It has the strongest infection ability since it is highly transmissible. It has a shorter incubation period, higher capacity to cause reinfection and infect even those who are vaccinated. But BF7 is not the most resilient subvariant of COVID-19. A study has reported more than tenfold higher neutralization resistance in another Omicron subvariant called BQ1. A higher neutralization resistance means that there is a higher likelihood of variants spreading into population and replacing other variants. Now, persons infected with BF7 variant of Omicron may experience symptoms similar to those of other subvariants. It is likely to cause severe illness among those pre-existing conditions and weaker immune systems. The first case of BF7 in India was detected in October 2022 by Gujarat Biotechnology Research Center. So far, two cases have been reported from Gujarat and one from Odisha. 
COVID-19 surge in China. Now, China witnessed a surge in COVID-19 cases after the government lifted the zero COVID policy. China had been following this policy for the last three years, which involved extremely restrictive measures to deal with any surge in cases. Every known case, even asymptomatic, was mandatorily hospitalized. Small outbreak triggers hard lockdowns and suspected cases and all their contacts were kept under long isolations. The measures were effective in keeping a check on the spread of the virus. However, it also meant that a large proportion of the population was never infected by the virus and had no natural immunity, thereby rendering it extremely susceptible. So once the virus was able to break through the defenses, it spread rapidly in the population. China has high vaccination rate. However, vaccine used in China was developed against original variant of coronavirus. The virus has mutated many times over since onset in 2019. The Omicron variants are known to evade immune response from the most vaccines currently in use. That will be it.